birthing, anchoring, and other mooring operations. Birthing. A ship can berth to a wharf or double bank to another ship or moored to a mooring buoy. A vessel is generally made fast with three to four headlines or stern lines, two to three breast ropes, and two springs fore and aft. The headlines or stern lines should ideally be of a long lead for better holding power. These lines control generally ships' both surging and swaying movements, including any yawing. The breast ropes should be as horizontal as possible for the best holding power. These lines are solely deployed to control ships' swaying movement. The springs, on the other hand, are used to control the ship's surging movement. For effective holding power, these lines should be as close to the ship side with a long lead. The mooring ropes are passed through mooring chocks or fair leads or Panama leads and are made fast on bollards or bits on the deck and made ready for running, each with its eye led out through the correct fair lead. The hawsers can either be stored on the drums or transferred onto the bollards by means of rope stoppers. A stopper is used to transfer the weight of the mooring rope from the winch to the bits or vice versa. Two types of stoppers are in common use, rope and chain. Rope stoppers are used in the handling of fiber, mooring ropes, and chain stoppers are used in the handling of wire mooring ropes. The hawsers are best secured onto the bollards by figure of eight knots and finishing with a half on top. When a wire is transferred onto the bollard, the figure of eight knot should have a whipping the center to prevent the wire from loosening from the bollard. While alongside the hawsers are frequently required to be tended as the ship may move forward and aft due to effect of tide or due to loading and discharging. To pass the mooring ropes from the ship to the shore, it may be necessary to use a heaving line. It consists of approximately 30 meters of 12 millimeters nylon rope one end of which is whipped, and the other weighted with a monkey's fist. It is used to establish a connection with people in another ship, people on the shore, or shipmates who have fallen overboard. When handling mooring wires a thicker messenger line called a gat line is used. Whenever synthetic ropes and wires are being used care, should be taken to ensure that the ship staff does not get their legs fouled with the rope. Similarly, precautions should be taken when tightening the ropes to ensure that the crew does not get hurt when the ropes part since polypropylene ropes and wire do not give any warning before they part. All crew should be wearing proper safety gear. Communication between the bridge and the mooring station is done by means of a walkie-talkie. Tugs assist in berthing and unberthing the vessel. When tugs are used for berthing and unberthing either the tug or the ship's line can be used. Turning and towing as well as for pulling the vessel away from the berth. Pushing vessel alongside for berthing. The lines are made fast to the bollard. Good communication is required between the tug master and the ship staff to ensure that the correct location and length of line is used for making fast. The tug line should be lowered to the tug in a controlled manner to avoid danger to tug or ship's crew. The ship staff should keep well clear of the tug line when the tug is pulling to avoid danger if the rope parts. Fenders can be fixed type on the wharf or portable type on board the vessel. Fenders protect the ship side from coming into contact with the jetty wall. If the fenders on the wharf are inadequate then portable coir fenders or rubber tires should be lowered from the deck and made fast onto the railing or bulwark. 
to ensure that rats from the shore do not come on board or vice versa rat guards are placed on all the mooring ropes after berthing these rat guards should be removed prior to slackening the ropes for unberthing A rat guard is a disc of steel metal fitted around a hawser to prevent rats from boarding a vessel moored at clock.